All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the All Life Talk series on immunology, an introduction to CAR-T and CAR-NK for cancer therapy. On behalf of All Life Group, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for taking your precious time off to be with us here today. As some of you might already know, All Life Group is a biopharma enterprise founded by a team of scientists who aspire to provide advanced cell technology-based solutions to help cur solve current degenerative diseases, chronic illnesses, with the support of more than 50 researchers located in Cambridge University and Aston Medical School in UK, Peking University in China, and its own research centre in Beijing. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our main sponsor, Paolo Berhad, for making this series of talks possible. And we would also like to extend our gratitude to One World Hotel, LYC Mother and Child, and ATM Group. So I'd like to first introduce our speaker, First speaker of the day, Professor Gu Yu Chun. He is the professor and chair of the molecular pharmacology at Peking University the Institute of Molecular Medicine. He is also the founder and chief scientist of All Life Medical Science and Technology, and is the honorary professor of molecular physiology at Aston University. Professor Gu is also a medical physiologist with expertise in cardiovascular diseases, cell therapy, mitochondria biology, and ion channel studies. His research in the last past six years has been in the field of immune cell engineering in challenging prostate cancer and clinical applications of stem cells for a variety of degenerative diseases. Please give me a, him a warm welcome. Okay, I, at the beginning, I uh, just introduced myself again because uh, some positions have changed. Now, uh, my laboratory has moved from Beijing University to Aston University. And at the moment, I'm the director of Translational and Regenerative Medicine Center in Aston Medical School in UK. And also, I'm the founder of the company, All Life. And we have the two platform, technology platforms. One platform we call CAR-NK is to treat the cancer and tumor. And another one uh, is IPS-based uh, the stem cell technology. We use the, to differentiate it into different function cell to treat the chronic disease and a, a kind of the degenerative disease. So why we choose the regenerative medicine, this field? Because as uh, in our, we know in our body, we have uh, over one million a kind of the physi physiology and the pathophysiology reaction. And uh, traditional, when we choose the drugs, we need to know very clearly the target. And at the moment, the chemical targets can only target 250 points. So that takes a percentage less than 0 0.025. So that means it's a still a long way to go. So we can find the proper drugs to treat the all kind to cover all kind of the disease. And uh, interestingly, in the body, we have uh, roughly around 230 type of the cells. So if we can find the way to regenerate this kind of the 230 types of the cells, then we can reform the tissue and organ and bring back the function. So this is a way. I think that's probably will take a shorter uh, period can achieve the final uh, uh, goal. And uh, at the beginning, we talk about the uh, immune cell therapy for the cancer. Actually, in our body, we, we have the cancer cell and we have the immune, immune cells. And the immune cells should be able to surveil and find the new mutation and find the cancer cell and kill it. And uh, always we think in the body only have the white and black, these two sides. Actually, it is not. In the 80% of the normal people in our body, we have a kind of balance. So that means in our body, the cancer cells already happens. But in somehow, our immune cells not kill them all. They limited the cell, the cancer cell, in a very limited uh, place. So it's kind of the uh, balance. And when we think about use the immuno, uh, therapy to, kill, to treat the cancer, actually we do the two sides. One side, we need to activate immunoresponse. response. 
So actually, there's a couple of cells for us to choose. One is T cells and NK cells and B cells. Another time part, we need to inhibit immunotolerance. And actually, a lot of the drugs at the moment appeared in the clinic, such as uh, CTRA4, PD-1. And uh, immunocell therapy uh, have uh, uh, over 30 years history in development. And at the very beginning, a kind of the lac cell and uh, very popular, everyone probably heard a lot, CIK, cellular induced killer cell and DCCIK. And uh, the kind of the innate immunity and uh, adaptive immunity, and uh, including the recent CAR-T and the CAR-NK treatment. So, there is a, a T2 cells need to be pay more attention because at the moment in uh, States and also in UK and uh, all the big hospitals, they have a laboratory called Adaptive Immunotherapy Laboratory and a big player called Rosenberg in this field. And what's that mean, T2? T2 is the tumor infiltrating lymphocyte. And in the uh, concept, so in the tumor, in our body, we already have the T cell which very precisely recognize this type, this type of the tumor. And actually, so we, we ask the question, why this cell not kill the tumor? There are a couple of reasons, because for example, PD-1, uh, the block, the inhibition, and CTRA4 inhibition, and so on. So the T cells recognize the t tumor, but the T cell was inhibit, uh, inhibited. And also, because the T cells number is very small, so they cannot fight against the cancer. So how to make this T? And that's the works need to collaborate with the surgeon. So when the operation taken the, uh, this kind of the tissue of the tumor, we can isolate the this type of the T cells from the tumor. And afterwards, we can amplification, make the, uh, the T cells like a cloning. And uh, there's the right way show how to pick up the right cloning. So this type of subtype of the T cell will have very specific targeting these tumor cells. This is a case published in 2015 in Science. And uh, the uh, Rosenberg group, and they use this method to find a very specific T cell uh, subcloning against this to, uh, breast cancer. So they infused, eventually, they infused about 15 billion this type of T cell, we call the two, and the killed this, the patients, and all the cancer is gone. And interestingly, these patients have the relapse after two years find the tumor again. And very simple, they defrost the cell from liquid nitrogen, use that the cell again, infuse to the patient, tumor again, gone as, uh, in, the next, in this treatment. So that's the indication, this type of the T cell, they recognize this tumor very precisely, they can effectively kill the tumor. And so also because the kind of this adaptive immuno a therapy laboratory in this big hospital. So the working combination between the surgeon and the laboratory and actually they save a lot of the patients because usually after the surgeon operation is the chemotherapy and the radiotherapy. And by this way, can very efficiently to clear the cancer. So, we say, and uh, we, we, everyone knows, we, at the moment, we have uh, three classic ways to treat the cancer. One is operation. Second, radiotherapy and the chemotherapy. And uh, we will ask one question. Eventually, how the cancer be completely gone or killed in the body? So actually we think in our system, we have very strong immunosystem. When the immunosystem be active, be all reactive, 
they can recognize this cancer and kill the cancer. So actually, I summarize it in a couple of ways. The first way, we, we see this is a tumor. And the first that the tumor is there, we need, because we all know the tumor has surfaced antigen. The antigen has passed to the APC, antigen present cells. The major is DC cell or the macrophage. So the tumor has to be, the tumor cells has to be killed so the antigen, surface antigen can release. And there are some many ways to kill the cancer. For example, radiotherapy and chemotherapy. Because all, no matter the normal cell or cancer cell, they both died, but at least some antigen released from the cancer. And this antigen be endocytosis by the DC cells, APC cells. And APC cells present this, this specific antigen to the T cells and teach the T cells say, okay, this structure is your target. So the T cells will come out and kill the cancer cells. So if we imagine, and what's our, um, we usually use the chemotherapy. So chemotherapy is an effective way to cause the cancer release this antigen. So in the patients, uh, some patients lucky, okay, they have a react very robust uh, the APC cell and they have the T cell, so the T cell eventually killed all the cancer. But recently, because uh, when we think about it, we, if we real, have a review back, a couple of years ago, the CIK treatment, cellular induced killer cells, and in the treatment, someone saying, okay, sometimes, okay, the treatment is very well, in fact, sometimes it seems not work, so why? A lot of the T cells there, why they didn't kill, kill, kill the cancer? Because they need a time of the represent to alert the TCR structure. T cell cannot go through this path. And also the, the other one, because we know the T cells recognize the antigen on the surface of the tumor, but the T cells can be inhibited so we need to release this inhibition. So at the moment, we, we can have this kind, uh, a couple of drugs called the CTLA4 or PD-1 or PDR one and uh, to do that. So if we summarize, seems like in all the cancer, this treatment, we follow the four steps. The one step, release the tumor surface antigen. You can do it by radiotherapy, by chemotherapy, or even by NK cells, because NK cells kill the cancer. Second, you need to pass through to the uh, APC cells, like dangerous uh, DC cells. A very good example, we know uh, there's the blood cancer, and uh, at the moment, we work in the hospital with doctors. We use liquid nitrogen to only frozen couple of pounds of the cancer pounds. And of course, the patients will have the uh, PD-1 pre-treatment for a week. And after liquid nitrogen frozen the cancer pond, and after two weeks, all the blood cancer from the inner surface, every, all the cancer disappeared. So that's the case, just the tears. The frozen method is released antigen passed to the AD, ADC cells because in the body, GMCSF and uh, interleukin-4 can induce the monocyte to DC cells. So you can enforce that. And afterwards, because the uh, T cells recognize the antigen, but you need to release the, uh, the inhibition. So well, all this procedure, uh, these four steps, very important. And actually in the uh, cancer therapy. But at, uh, after the CAR T appeared, they changed a lot because the CAR T, so that means this is a kind of, the, we know this is a, a T cells, this is a tumors. Actually, they have surface antigen, and uh, these T cells have T called the TCR, can combine the antigen of the cancer. But till so far, it's very difficult to predict 
in the cancer, what is the right antigen, surface antigen? So no matter, we create some artificial thing. Artificial things, we know this antigen, but we can create the kind of the antibody. So we use the antibody to recognize this antigen in the cancer cell surface. And actually, when they recognize it, it's, it can bring the T cells close to the tumor. And we use the T cells Z subunit and connected different, different things to activate the T cells. So actually, we CARS means a chimeric uh, antigen receptor. And the CAR structure recognizes the antigen on the cancer surface and brings the T cells, goes to the cancer, activate the T cell, T cell then target the cancer. So actually, the procedure we need, first we need a T cell collection, and the second we need to do the transfection, do the gene modification. We on the surface, we give uh, artificially the antibody uh, heavy chain and the line chain. And uh, afterwards, we need a refuse back to the patient. And uh, in 2017, the T cells and uh, actually be approved by FDA, uh, Novartis and the Kite, the two kind company. And uh, afterwards, the T cells to treat the B type uh, lymphoma have very great successful rate. This is the BBC News in June this year. And uh, simply tell the audience, public audience, okay, CAR T can really treat this lymphoma, no matter you are in which grade or which phase. And uh, also tell the public the price is about 28,000, uh, 280,000 pounds. And, uh, but fortunately, it's covered by NHS. And so far, in the lots of the CAR T under the clinical trial against the different uh, uh, cancer like uh, melanoma, like a BCMA, and uh, like uh, a different uh, cancer against a different cancer. And so far, only two has been approved by FDA. But what, what's the CAR T disadvantage? The first disadvantage is the neurotoxicity, and we call it the CRS, cytokine release syndrome, which usually causes the patient's shock or death. And because of the reason to cause this CRS is because T cells, when they target the, neuro, uh, the tumor, they usually release interleukin-6. The purpose is uh, recruiting more immunocells or T cells participate the killing. So the T interleukin-6 is kind of avoided. And the second, this paper published in last year, October, they said that the, when they manufacture the CAR T, because we usually use the patient's blood, and actually we can have a kind of the CAR cancer to amplify the cancer cells. That, that's what we not want to see. And in the third point, that because of very, very high cost. Now what is the price at the moment? The US dollar is 475,000 for, for one session treatment. Kite is 373. The reason, because the T cells cannot be used by the others because the T cell is the major player for GVHD. And uh, so at the moment, uh, from the information released by Novartis, the cost to produce a CAR T cost about 15,000 US dollar. But the quality control cost about 50,000 US dollar. They need also 20%. They receive the patient's blood, but cost everything, but cannot produce CAR T. So this is all the cost. And uh, so, seem, it is seen that in a short period, the cost for the kind of the CAR T treatment cannot be dropped down. So, by this reason, we 
try to find out the way. The way is, uh, okay, the first thing, we're wondering this treatment is safe. There's no CRS. So it's a good point for the doctor, practice, teacher, and also for the patients, benefit for, to the patient. Second, we wonder whether we can have something is affordable and also it's offset the drugs. So this is the reason we work on the CAR NK. Because the NK cell is one of the immuno cells can used allogenically. So different people can use. We usually usually we can use the health donor, get the NK production and then to treat the patient. That happens already have two to twenty years history. So it's safe, proof is safe and the clinical e effective. So NK cells, it's a kind of the NK, nature killer cells, or we other name we call the innate immuno cells. And so that means NK cells, they are not, they don't have very pin specific target. Actually, they have a kind of a, a very general target. So when the NK cells meet the tumor, Actually, they usually can release the perforin and the gray enzyme and also can use the ADC, ADCC mechanism to kill the cancer. And uh, so, in the NK cells, importantly, we have KIR and the KIR, two sides, activation and inhibitory. And from the lots of the activation, uh, the molecular in NK, so we study a lot. We start from the NKP30, NKP46. We start a lot. But fortunately, at the end, we find NK244 as the modulate target. So NK cells have a long history used in the clinic. The first thing, they can use uh, logenic. This is a paper published in 2002, indicate the, diff, uh, the NK resource from the other resource to treat the patients, they have the zero rejection. And also recently, NK cells, this paper published in last year, June, and indicate NK cells can increase the immune response for PD-1, which is the kind of the drug, very, uh, give a very big, a big hope for the cancer patient to to do that, to receive the treatment. And also, PD-1L is another kind of antibody, monoclonal antibody to, against the cancer. And recently, uh, find PD-1L is not to block PD-1. It's actually it's to activate the NK cell to reach the treatment purpose. And also the papers pub also published in, in 2018 find NK cells, especially from the umbilical cord, they has the specific healing effect for the cervical cancer, cancer and ovary cancer. The, the pa paper published in the uh, immunology, the very good journal, but of course at the moment the mechanism is still not clear. So there is also, in the NK cells, they have a, a kind of the NKG2A. But NKG2A will like CTR4 and PD-1. This is a new check, immuno checkpoint for the immunotherapy. So in summary, NK cells have a very strong killing ability, capability, and also involve a very complicated this immuno response. So actually, we, as I mentioned in the last couple of slides, we work very hard. Luckily, we find CD244 is a structure which link NK cells with uh, antibody heavy chain and line chain. This part will recognize the antigen on the cancer cell surface. And uh, through this connection, this signal will come into the NK cells, and NK cells release gray enzyme B to kill the cancer. This is the version, the very early version of our CAR NK. 
And afterwards, recently, we are going to find another pattern, which we have the more uh, structure, which help to activate NK cells and have more specific they can target, they can recognize the antigen in the cancer. So actually, uh, compared to the CAR T, the CAR NK technology, we have patent. So we have a, a, a full intellectual property. And because the new drugs, uh, how to protect the new drugs, the first thing, the structure patent. Second, the productive production, the line, they have something to, to protect. We have another patent. So because NK cells, it's very difficult to transfect only 10%, but now we can have the 50 to 60% the transfection rate. So, why CARNK works better? The first thing we, talk, we mentioned, CRS is the one very big concern for the doctor and for the patients. So CARNK, we own, when they get, KNK meet the cancer cells, they release the interferon gamma, but not interleukin-6. Because interferon gamma is commonly used in the clinic to treat virus-related virus disease. There's no side effect has been observed in the clinic. And the second, because we, we can use, pre-made, use the health donor, pre, uh, the NK cell, we can pre-made CAR-NK. So the kind of the drugs off-shelf. And then when the patients come after clear diagnostic, the second day, we can start the treatment. And also by this way, we can reduce the cost because CAR-T, each CAR-T production is 50,000 US dollar. But use CAR-NK if you manufacture a batch for 100 patients or for 1,000 patients, I also cost about 50,000 US dollars. So the cost will be very low and uh, the price can be affordable by the patient. And also because of safety, the CAR T, usually we take the patient's blood. The blood usually we call the circulating tumor cell or uh, immature cells. So actually, CAR cancer cell is not avoid. But CAR NK, we usually take the health donor. So this is no way have the CAR cancer cells. So this is the reason MD Anderson also last year published their clinical study. They observed 10 cases, and none of the cases find a CRS, which consistent to our observation. And also they say it is kind of next generation nature clear cell for the, immuno, for the cancer immunotherapy. Okay, so at the moment, we work on the lympho lymphoma and ARL, and also we work on the uh, MM, and also for the two solid cancer is prostate cancer and ovary cancer. And this is we summarize all the, uh, the key points of the CAR-NK anti-CD19. So we see that's, you, that's majorly CAR-NK release interferon gamma. And they, when the cancer cell connected with your cancer, a cancer cell is connected with the CAR-NK, they majorly release gray enzyme B. The gray enzyme B eventually damage the cancer cells. In the clinical, after 20 days infusion, you can clearly see all the cancer is gone, and there is no CRS be observed. So the safe for the doctor and also safe for the patient. Oops. And this is the prostate cancer. PSMA is a specific surface prostate specific membrane antigen, which represented in the. Uh, tumor prostate cancer cell surface. And the, the big one is a cancer cell, prostate cancer cell. Green one is a KNK. It can recognize the, uh, the cancer cell and finally killing it. 
the time is real time. And uh, we find we usually it takes about eight hours from the recognition and the killing the cancer. And also showing they are low inter interleukin-6 and the major interferon gamma. And also we talked about ovary cancer. It's also we can clearly see uh, the safety and also for the tumor size is reduced and the uh, lifespan is, is over longer after the treatment. And also, in here, we combine the CAR-NK technology with the IPS technology. Because the IPS technology, I, rem I believe uh, everyone knows uh, there's a company in America called FATE. FATE, in 2000, uh, January 2018, they obtained IND to test IPS-derived NK cell to treat the solid tumor. And in this April, they released their clinical result, find safety very good and uh, more effective. And uh, consistent, also consistent to our observation, we find that the car NK derived from IPS, they have a very strong killing effect, efficacy compared to this I car NK, this normal car NK, this is NK. So by this way, we can really get 100% the pure NK, which each cells have the car structure on its surface. We can have the mass, large scale manufacture, and that will be more cheaper and more safer. Because in this way, it's only the cell culture will finally get large amount, the pure, 100% pure structure, the car NK for the treatment. At the moment, uh, we work with uh, uh, these prestigious hospitals to have the, pre, uh, the kind of the preclinical trial. And the second platform we are doing is the IPS. IPS, this is uh, the schematic photos we show. This is IPS, or called the embryonic stem cells, which can def uh, convert differentiated into any type of the cells in the body. Because IPS obtain, we can obtain from the somatic cells, for example, skin and the PBMC, we convert it to the uh, IPS. So this, uh, this procedure, there is no ethical restriction. So actually, at the moment, the IPS technology in our hand is uh, uh, more efficient and uh, very high uh, pluripotency, and uh, there's no less the risk in cancer and the source of the things. And at the moment, and, and the whole procedure is we take the samples, somatic cells, for example, skin and blood, PBMC, and then we reprogramming, obtain IPS. And some IPS we storage, and some we differentiate into the neural stem cell, endothelium progen cell eyelid to treat a variety of disease. And in the, uh, in the first section, I would like we use a neural stem cell to challenge a neurodegenerative disease. There's a clinical trial, and of course, based on the different neural stem cell, which obtained from the, uh, from the uh, yeah, obtained from the human, and uh, have the clinical trial at the moment is in the phase one, phase two, and so on. And basically, at the moment, use the neural stem cell, we can differentiate it into uh, dopamine uh, progen cell, which to treat the Parkinson's disease, and the oligodendrocyte, which can treat uh, MS, and astrocyte, which treat ALS. And uh, at the moment, have the couple of ways to re to transplant the neural stem cell back to the body. One is called local injection, and also we can use a vein a systematic injection and a lump injection. And uh, in our hand, we have a lots of the modification, so that can let us to make the neural stem cell uh, early, safe, and quick. This is uh, compared with embryonic stem cell, the uh, 
iPS we derived from the fibroblast, and afterwards we differentiated into the neural, we can have a much stronger compared with the neural stem cell, which is classic one. We say we have the better capability to differentiate them into the neural. And uh, we know that in the neural system, we have the neural oligodendrocyte, and between the neural is atrocyte. We can actually, we can differentiate into the different type to cover all of them. And uh, oligodendrocyte, actually, they are uh, very important to involve myelination, which related a lot of the disease. And uh, half, 50% diabetic patients have dem demyelination which is very difficult to treat in the clinic. And now we collaborate with Peking Hospital. We are doing this clinical trial to use the oligodendrocyte progeny cell to treat this demyelination. So this is, uh, can see this is the neuron, and afterwards we get the oligodendrocyte. And this is the color to show the cell differentiation and to show they have the to show the, this, uh, this is process. And uh, very interestingly, and in, during our research, we found some uh, drugs called the pyrarine, which isolate from the herbs. They can stimulate the IPS differentiate into the OPC, which maybe indicate in somehow in the herb treatment, this kind of the thing will make uh, to, to, to facilitate in the body, the stem cell differentiated into the function cells. And also, we, uh, in the study, we find the very important in other cells which never been noticed before, called endothelium cells, which is the inner lane of the blood vessel. Because we found this very accidentally, we find it in the spinal cord break, in the mouse, the first cell comes to the break site is endothelium cells. So we find endothelium cells can increase this kind of OPC, oligodendrocyte progen cell proliferation and migration. And in the demyelination model, so we inject drugs into the spinal cord to damage this kind of the myelination. We find in the uh, lesion site, then the first coming is uh, endocytic cells, and otherwise is uh, uh, oligodendrocyte progen cells. So that means to indicate we can put this cell combination to treat this uh, uh, spine injury. So, and also we work on the uh, neuron for to the PD models. Uh, pro Parkinson disease, and we are recruiting the patients in the Peking Hospital as well for the Parkinson disease. Because uh, in the model, we can clearly see we injected a human neural stem cell and a dop dopamine progen cell into this uh, uh, model. Because this model, they don't have the do dopamine clearly, so you can see the color is faint. And uh, after injection, neural stem cell becomes a neuron, and uh, they start to secrete the dopamine. And there's one patient we treated by the, this neural stem cell derived from IPS. This patient is a brain injury and, uh, oops, and uh, have very high tension in the tender tension. They can mo not move. Although the open, eyes open, but like uh, they cannot communicate. And afterwards, we take the skin to get the IPS differentiated into neural stem cell, we injected from lumbar injection, and otherwise patients tender goes to the normal and can start to communicate. Okay. And also, and uh, in China, stroke is a serious killer at the moment. It's number one killer, and the most the problem is a vascular problem, okay, like stroke. And we know in the body, we have called endothelium progen cell, which released from the bone marrow, actually when they can clearly, uh, very effectively, to repair the vessel. If the vessel, 
and also they can remodel the vessel. So actually, remodel the structure of the the vessel tree. And uh, clearly, we we apply this uh, strategy again. We get the IPS, and uh, actually we get we can differentiate it into the endothelium progenitor cell, and uh, afterwards it's endothelial cells to for the vessel treatment. Okay, this is uh, just to show how this in induce this differentiation uh, uh, procedure, how the cells change. Okay, and uh, eventually after nine days, we can have the endocytic cells, which in vitro, they can form the tube formation. And when you inject it into the body, they can have the 3D, the kind of the vessel, new vessel. And uh, importantly, we talk about repairing because in and 100% uh, diabetes patients have endothelium dysfunction or damaged. We published paper in 2015. Uh, and uh, half percent of the high blood pressure patients have a kind of the uh, endothelium damage. We call it endothelium dysfunction. In China, affected 260 million the population. And uh, this is a, a way to clearly demonstrate endothelium progenitor cells which can repel the uh, endothelium damage. This is a normal one. The, uh, this uh, red color indicates the endothelium. And we use the balloon injury and uh, close the endothelium will move and repel it. But otherwise, you have this structure and the, your macrophage will be here, deposit the, the lipid upon this position will cause the atherosclerosis. And with this lipid falling down, will cause the stroke. But the, in, this is a control. And the, when the damage balloon damage, we give a blot, uh, about uh, 1.5 million cells per kilo. And uh, the vessel repaired as a control, as a normal. So that means endothelium progeny cell is more effective to repair the vessel. And uh, so this indicate lots of the patients. For example, we talk about uh, diabetes, we talk about cardiac, we talk about high blood pressure. Because in the vessel, high blood pressure, the, all the reactive component is, re is produced and released by the endothelium. The smooth muscle is the effector. The only constriction, relaxation. The signal comes from nitric oxide, procycling, endothelium from endothelium. When the endothelium becomes old or damaged, all the vessels, the plasticity will reduce. So we can use this kind of the endothelium progenitor cell to repair it, to give a new, young endothelium. Oh. Yeah, last a bit, we talk about that type 1 diabetes. And of course, in China, now it's number, uh, now it's third uh, in the world for the, pop, for the patient's diabetes. And we know the type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is uh, somehow, some reason, inflammation will actually will damage the eyelid in the pancreatic eyelid. So eyelid, inside the eyelid, beta cell will re can release produce and release insulin, which help to lower down the blood sugar, uh, glucose. And uh, so a long time ago, and uh, people already find it's, a, it's a either way, just isolate the eyelid and uh, put back to the patients instead of the organ move, uh, transplant, because the eyelid is uh, small and actually survive uh, is easier. But how do you get this eyelid? So we also, now we can use IPS to produce large amount eyelid. Which eyelid is uh, compared to the eyelid isolated from the body? They are same structure, same function. Which, after they transplant, they can secrete the insulin, bring back the normal life. So this is uh, from IPS. That's the just after to show the IPS when they settle down, how they get the uh, monolayer. And after they are caused 
takes about seven stages. And in this three stages, the some the cells have to be uh, like a bloom, and actually they uh, start to detach from the surface. And in the fourth stage four, actually they can show this de development markers change, which fit to in our in human the embryonic this development. So in the Stage six, actually we can see the islet we formed can release the insulin, can generate the insulin. And, but this insulin, this uh, islet cells, when you stimulate the glucose, you will not see the insulin release. That's very important because uh, people will say, oh, I have this uh, islet generated from the embryonic stem cell or IPS, but they don't respond to the Glucose is because in the same sixth stage is called immature stage. So that's the cells that can produce the insulin, but they have not mechanism can release the insulin. So only in the seventh stage, in the stage seven, okay, the, this kind of suspended, this kind of balloon shape, and uh, the, now they have the C peptide usually majorly expressed, uh, released by. Uh, is afterwards is uh, splitting by the pre-insulin and the glucagon generated by the alpha cells. So that means in the islet you have alpha cell, beta cell, and the third type cell. Okay, this is a very good summary. So that's the islet we uh, obtained from the IPS derived. They have a normal structure islet uh, compared to the islet isolated from human body. And in the stage seven, so that's importantly, they are mature islet, so they have all the component which determine the cell can, in response to the glucose stimulation, release, glu uh, release the insulin. And of course, you can see in vitro, they can have the insulin uh, in secretion higher. And we use STZ, this drugs, to damage the pancreatic. And so this mouse, they don't have any insulin. So the glucose would be very high. And we implant one per one gram, two grams per one human islet. After we transplant, the glucose level will go to normal and sustained till the end of this rat. And also now we are running the clinical trial. We hope that use this method, actually we can kill these type 1 diabetes patients. And uh, you do not need to take, uh, inject insulin every day. OK. And then uh, this is uh, some of our uh, clinical trial IND plan. OK, we work with uh, Peking Hospital and uh, this kind of, uh, prestigious hospital to have the clinical trial, clinical collaboration. And this is a lab in Peking, and uh, we call it All Life. And also, this is uh, uh, in the Regenerate Medicine Center in Austin Medical School in Birmingham. And also, we set up the big lab, and also the uh, biotherapy clinical center in Kunming. And here, we have registered some clinical trial in the clinical trial.gov.u uh, in the States. Okay, and finally, I would like to thank all my students and collaborators in Peking University and uh, all my colleagues in Aston Medical School and all my collaborator and also some like uh, co some is co founder of our company in Cambridge University. Thanks for their effort to make us can have the performance right now. Thank you. All right, thank you, Professor Gu. So now before I dismiss him, I uh, would like to open the floor up for some Q&A. If anyone would like to ask a question, please raise your hand and the mic will be passed to you.
thank you, Professor, for a very informative talk. My name is Dr. Masita Arif from uh, Institute for Medical Research. I would like to ask about the eyelid cell therapy in type 1 diabetes. Uh, because type 1 diabetes is usually the cause due to autoantibodies. Yeah. So how do okay. you overcome that problem? Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, um, at the beginning, I introduced what we call the regenerative medicine. There's a couple of ways to treat the patients. The first thing we're wondering, at the very early, the first instance, we need to back, bring back the function. Okay, the second, we find out what kind of the cause to induce this disease. So as uh, there's, uh, of course, it is autoimmune disease uh, factors or inflammation factors which destroy this uh, uh, eyelid. That happens. But uh, till now, the mechanism is not clear. So actually, we think the best way for us is we give, like we give the patient the insulin. So, okay, first thing, you bring your, your, your function back to the normal, as a normal people. And our research, we're trying to find out what's the cause, maybe two years, three years. And if after the cause, after we've that funding, maybe we can clearly remove this kind of the disease. But till today, I think that we should think about the temporary way. So this is the thing, we uh, regenerate the eyelid, we transplant into the body. Of course, this cause still exists there, but we know that type 1 diabetes, it developed about 10 years. Nothing will happen in one year, in a very short period. So we think, okay, after transplantation, patient probably five years, okay, your, the, the eyelid you transplanted, they still survive, maybe it's half is gone. But after five years, you transplant again. So this is a, also uh, Lily, the, the drug company, uh, the, the, the fourth biggest the, the drug com uh, pharmaceutical industry company, last year, they, uh, they declared they are going to use the embryonic stem cell derived uh, eyelid to treat the patients. Embryonic stem cell derived eyelid, we know it's a uh, different genetic. The immune system will kill it. And this, but they claim only in four months trans transplantation. Otherwise, other words, after every four months or every six months, you need transplantation. So that's, uh, so this is, uh, I think, so clearly, we cannot at the moment exclude the cause to induce, which induced uh, the diabetes. But we can use eyelid to bring the people back to the normal life. Uh, about the NK cells, uh, mm. can you, uh, actually is there any difference the uh, NK cells from the stored uh, hematopoietic such as the in the cord blood bank, mm. uh, cord blood, uh, mm. as compared to the fresh one? Is there any? Okay, that's a, that's a bit uh, complicated because we, we know in the cord blood, because in the development actually in the uh, cord blood they have very high percentage of the NK cells about over 20 percent this is the NK cells prevent the uh, we say the baby of eaters from all the kind of the different uh, virus bacteria infection and uh, adult we usually have the six percent to ten percent and okay, we, we, we talk about, so this is the reason we think we go to use the umbilical cord because we can have a, a high percentage harvest to, to get the cell. And the, in the second point, and uh, because recently the study indicate NK cells from umbilical cord, they have the specific healing for some, some certain type of the uh, cancer, as I mentioned. Uh, cervical cancer and uh, ovary cancer, although the mechanism is not clear. But uh, compared to the umbilical cord NK, the NK cell isolated from adult, it seems not very strong to killing this kind of the cancer. Okay, so certainly they have something different. Or maybe say, because uh, in the adult, our, in the body, uh, the cancer cell release lots of the factors, uh, molecular, which modify your, your immune cells, which maybe that's the case, uh, why the NK cells in the adult have no such specific killing. Um, and also, uh, last year, a paper published indicate very clearly if a 
uh, if there's uh, NK cell percentage in the bloodstream less than 2.5, the next two years, definitely, there's a cancer where occurs. Uh, so that's, a, in, so that's, that's, so that's, a, that's, that's a basically, a, yeah, for this kind of NK. Hi, I'm Dr. Kenny from uh, Sunway. I want to ask a uh, doctor from IMR, uh, the type 1 diabetes, right? Yeah. Uh, you say it's an autoimmune disease. Yeah. Is it a proven uh, uh, thing or is this just a theory? Because uh, in thyroid, uh, you see in thyroid autoimmune disease, I'm a practicing physician. I always order the anti-thyroid globulin TPO. You can prove that this patient is having an autoimmune disease against their own thyroid. Now, in type 1 diabetes, uh, have, is it a very common test that everyone would just draw blood and send to the lab and check autoimmune? Um, there is autoimmune antibody against their own islet pancreatic cells. And so what, what is the name of that antibody in all this? Thank you for the question. Actually, I'm the head, also, uh, I'm the head of Allergy Immunology Research Center. And under my center, we have... Uh, one of it is autoimmune unit. So under autoimmune unit, we also provide the test for uh, diabetes antibodies. Uh, essentially, we have the uh, anti-GAD, uh, uh, glutamic acid decarboxylase, uh, anti-IA2, uh, insulinoma uh, A2, and also we have the, uh, what we call as uh, uh, GAD, IA2, these two antibodies, uh, uh, and islet cell antibodies, ICA. So the trace antibody, we provide the test, is specific to the diabetes antibodies type 1. So usually patients who having this problem, these positive antibodies, they always develop diabetic ketoacidosis, very severe type of diabetes. So we do actually offer the test for all the government hospitals and private also in Malaysia. So for your information, if you're thinking that your patient may have a severe type of diabetes, uh, should test for the autoantibodies. That's why I asked uh, professor just now because we know that uh, if there is a positive antibodies, the tendency that these antibodies attack the organ, uh, of course, will be high lah, as compared to the one that negative antibodies. So type 1 antibodies can be autoimmune associated, can be non-autoimmune associated for type 1. For type 2, more to our lifestyle. If you're obese, you're not control high sugar, blood sugar, that one different story lah. Uh, type 2, so far, not really autoimmune uh, mediated. Type 1, yes. Uh, pediatrician and also adult. Uh, uh, yes, children also. Yeah, yeah. Yes, because it's, it's, can you imagine the children become adult? What? <laughs> so that's why. <laughs> so usually we notice in the request form, uh, there will be uh, DKA associated. Uh, It's regarding the uh, questions on the NK cells. Mm. Yeah. The NK cell, uh, when you in transplant into the patients, yeah. do you need to do fludarabine, cytarabine, five days, deplete their body? Because uh, CAR T, you yeah. always let the patient to do lympho depletion. Yeah. Do you need to do lympho depletion for NK cell transplant? Uh, actually, no. Yeah, no, not necessary. But uh, of course, uh, it's uh, uh, um, conventionally as a CAR T, there is a pre uh, pre-treatment uh, completion, yeah. Um, you were saying that uh, the CAR T that you provide for your patients is, uh, uh, no, the CAR NK cell, yeah. the NK cell that you provide to the patient yeah. is CAR, CAR, chimeric yeah. antigen receptor tag on, yeah. induced, is that true? Yeah, because actually in the quality control, usually you provide it for the uh, clinician where you include in the, the positive CAR, positive cell, a percentage so actually and uh, that's the one of the things to indicate your 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 card because the compound you use the pure nk cells not to achieve such effect yeah you can't do that actually it's a, because actually transfactor rate is usually about 60 50 to 60 percent so 50 percent is normal nk cells and another 50 percent or maybe 60 percent is car is a cell which have kind of the 
structure on the surface, the car structure mm. on the surface. Okay. So you mean your product is a mixture cocktail yeah, of actually, a normal yeah, NKSL actually, and car? Yeah, actually, if we uh, go back to the review to the car T cells, and if you look the Novartis information sheet, and the transfection rate over two percent, they will say it's it's okay. Two percent means uh, two percent of the T cells have car structure, 80, 98 percent cell without any structure T. So that means in, at the moment this kind of the uh, the cell is usually a mixture. Some cell have the structure, they have the right transfection, and some cell because cannot have such structure because virus infection rate is not always can be 100 percent. Yeah, it's very low. So um, the CAR T is not so active and also not so good for solitary tumor. Yeah, is your NK cell? NK cells can be better because act why uh, we 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 still back to the development, and uh, we we say the uh, pluripotent stem cell actually they differentiate into the different uh, organs afterwards, and in this development actually NK cells usually. Uh, and uh, usually the cells, some artificially becomes like old cells. This old cell means cell stops the uh, proliferation. And the NK cell will kill this kind of the old cells to finally to form the, uh, our, the shape and the things. So the NK cells have a very strong infiltration for the, for the different uh, organs. Yeah. So, so the NK cell in your center that you give to the patients, yeah. you don't need to do arteria. You just need to do venous, yeah. go to the whole body, yeah. Yeah. go to the lung, go to the heart, yeah. then yeah. go to the whole body. Yeah. Yeah. So it will just homing and go to kill. Yeah. And also the from the animal test, the uh, NK cell and car NK cells in the body will survive 14 days. So this is allogenic. Okay. This is an allogenic, 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 massively yeah. produced yeah. Yeah, one production for 1,000 patients can be given to many, yeah, many patients. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's what we're doing. But now we didn't make the 1,000. That's the big batch. But uh, the, uh, this type of the car and K cells in the body, they survive, the allogenic ones survive 14 days. And uh, which compared the CAR-T appeared more safe. Because the CAR-T, the reason FDA uh, approve it in 2017 because uh, the in the they find the girl the first uh, received the CAR T treatment after five years can find the car structure in her bloodstream so it's very serious because we we do the drugs we hope the drug take effect disappear quickly not not to have some anything residue so because this is the reason we also check allogenic the car and K how long well, residue in the body around two weeks, so that's okay. This means you can rough, you can you can control the amount, and uh, according to this uh, 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 this residue time. Yes, is it true that your NK cell has no MSC one, so it will not induce any antigen rejection from the human that receive it? And uh, this will goes to the another question because. Uh, uh, NK cells, they, I said it's not specific killing cells, they're not like T cells, have very specific structure, they can recognize this killing that. NK cells have a general target, uh, MHC1 missing, the cell is always the target for the NK cells. And for the GVHD stuff, and uh, because the reasons there's cur currently there are two types of the cell for the G GVHD treatment. One is the mesenchymal stem cell, another one is NK cells for the GVHD treatment. Because one of the reasons, but not true, I, I don't think this is true, but one of the reasons people try to explain it is uh, NK cell killing APC cell, host APC cells, so they will not have that kind of immuno reaction. So when you give allogenic NK cell to a new patient, yeah. the new patient cannot reject this no. NK cell no. because the NK cell that you give to the patient yeah. has no MSC marker 1. No, Is not, not, uh, not because, uh, because it's, uh, this NK cells affected APCs in the host cell. So actually, everything uh, this kind of GVD, GVHD happens, major player is T cells. Actually, this signal 
when not pass goes to the uh, T cells because the missing some middle part is missing because it's affected by the NK cells. So the NK cell goes to the body yeah. of the patient. Yeah. Anything that is inside the body of the patient that has no MHC1 missing cell, those are the foreign cells because uh, they mm. will just attack any cells mm. that did not show self. Is that true? Uh, That's how they kill the cancer cells in the body yeah. of the patient. Yeah, I think that uh, they, they, because of cancer, they have a different uh, cell antigen, which indicated, I think, the MHC1 missing is, uh, is a regular rule for the NK cell to killing. That's one. And also the second thing is because there are some specific antigen. Until now, we may not realize that which is targeted by the NK cells. For example, I, I mentioned that they can oversight and the cervical cancer. And also, NK cells is because they involved this uh, very complicated, this kind of, the, we, we say, the immune response. For example, enhance the PD-1 effect, and also uh, it's a kind of the directly becomes the regulator effector for the PD-L1. So involved this kind of the cancer targeting. So the patient goes to the center to receive NK cell. Do they need to receive the epilimumab, nivolumab, uh, all these things to PDL1, CTLA4 blockers to pre to you know immuno unblock them? Then go and receive your NK yeah. cell. Actually, Do you the, need that. The, yeah, actually, because you see, we won the clinical trial. We registered. We are wondering to do this. It's PD1 plus NK cells for the solid tumor. This is a, I think that's a, because we have done this uh, for uh, in China, we see uh, it's effective to, to do the treatment. Do you find it a different? You give them the PDL1 first, then NK cell, or N together, or no, after? It's actually the PD1 and the PDL1. Actually, you have uh, three days of a week pre treatment, and afterwards you give NK, and you show it great. Uh, sorry, for the interest of time, we'll be moving on. But if you have any other questions, you can email us later.